Clover 5131 doesn't go to default. 5130 is much better. It will go to default. And we can boot to Big Sur by pre boot. 5130, they have the recovery for the Big Sur, which we can boot it from, which is very nice. 5130, we can boot to Windows very nicely, unlike Open Core. Elite Book i7 6600U. The graphic card is HD 520. So I'm using Clover version 5130. I prefer this one over Open Core because I got everything working here which I can boot from Windows 10 while open core I couldn't it didn't show up for me to boot so everything is working on this one the difference between Catalina and Big Sur on this laptop so everything should be the same for other laptop that has 6600U and HD 520 so for the sound to work on this one, after Wake is still working, I don't use Codec Commander. So I think the new Apple ALC already take care of that. I'm going to show you my EFI folder and you can create your EFI folder, but I want to show you what's inside my EFI folder. So this is Clover 5130. 5131 doesn't boot with the default. So with this one right here, it will boot automatically to the pre-boot, which is very nice. And it also has recovery. So it works better than the open core, to my opinion, especially on this laptop. Inside Clover here, you have ACPI and you have a patch. So inside here, all I need to do is to patch my DSDT so that I have the battery and the RTC so that it won't go into the white screen every time we boot with this HP. ACPI, SSDT, EC, USB X, plug, Dotania, PNLF for the version of whatever green, and the USB UIAC that you have to patch according to IO registry. So that we'll get all the USB port working. So all I have is five files in the ACPI. The drivers, so we only use open runtime. This one is for the new 5130. HFS Plus, NTFS, FS Inject, Emu Variable. This one is for the NVRAM and pay APFS driver. I'm not sure if I need this, but it's okay to leave it in there. So you have ACPI drivers and the CAX. So in the CAX, in the order, you need the ACPI battery manager. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put all the version in here so you can see what version I use and you can download instead of asking me for the EFI folder. Alternate I. Okay. Whatever green I use 14.5, 1.4.5. Virtual SMC I use 1.1.9. USB inject all version 0.6.5. Lilu 1.5.0. Intel Mousy Kex. This one is for the network ethernet okay and when you look here hardware 
they have it the MAC address that means it's working Catalina is a SCI port of CAC so you can see the SATA this SSD SATA Voodoo PS2 controller is for the trackpad and keyboard so this one is version 1.9.2 so ACPI battery manager is 1.81.4 look for that that one will give you the battery here now I'm using the DW 1820A so that I have I have to use airport fix up I have a tutorial on this one version 2.1.1 Apple ALC is for the sound the sound on this one is connection 103C 807C and I use layout ID 13 for it to work with HDMI headphone auto select and have the HDMI output this only has the uh, display port so we need to use the display to HDMI so we can get the HDMI out to the monitor and the sound you can select it's already selected the Dell so when we unplug this display port so I go back down to the headphone that we put it in and it will unplug the headphone it should go back to the internal speakers so this one right here we need to use layout ID 13 for it to work this batch RAM is for the Bluetooth that handoff support which I can beam okay so airdrop so we need BRCM data .cax for that and Bluetooth injector so all of them is 2.6 2.5.5 again in order for the iMessage and FaceTime to work we need to have I have a tutorial on how to get this one working but I'm gonna go through it real quick right now is that iMessage debug got to work with no errors IO registry EN0 has to be built in which is the Ethernet and EN1 is my Wi-Fi those two must be done the third one has to be done is that NVRAM got to work so when you write something into the NVRAM I wrote my Mac equal MacBook Pro 13 alright and it will show up here every time you boot that means the NVRAM is working so those things are the one that you need to get the iMessage to work so let's go to this ACPI the config file SSDT drop OEM yes and the name fixes SSDT drop OEM no generate plugin type 1 and you put four of these guy on it so PNLF is for the dimmer Plug Dotania is for the power management. So the speed step is here. See this? SSDT EC USB X. This one is to boot fixer. And this one for the USB power port 3.0. So it's had 3.0 bus only. Boot. Because I have the Broadcom 1820. A I have to boot I have to put the driver equal to two. Everything else is just simple normal. Default volume is my SSDT Pro 132. Ignore and VRAM boot is no. Devices USB 
fix ownership, add clock, inject. Well, I'm going to put this config on my website so you can go there and download as a sample. So you have to look for the PCI root Wi-Fi Broadcom. Okay, and this is the 1820A is the BCM 4350 and it's not 4360. This one right here is a graphic and U1619 which is the same as if you check in your Windows. Audio in check 13 and reset HDA disable driver which I don't have there so graphics I put the high GPM platform ID 16 19 right inject nothing now kernel and patches if you patch your Apple RTC and the one in the DSDT you will not have that white screen of the RTC problem with the HP alright I don't patch force CAC to load kernel to patch nothing CAC to patch only two I use with the external icon and enable trim so that I can have trim support on my SATA SSD okay so here trim support okay make it simple so quartz is the most important one for Clover to use so HCI port limit is zero I set everything equal to one here and everything else is zero to make it easier to see system parameter UZUID here is from the BIOS go there and get it if you have if you don't just get any of them is fine the, the RT va variable this one makes sure it's all zero so that we can know we can have CRS utility status enable this MLB can be any 17 digit the ROM has to be the MAC address the Ethernet so this one right here is the same as here so the SM BIOS I use MacBook Pro 13.2 so everything is working perfectly sleep wake I will have tutorial on how to patch the DSDT but this one is very simple you only need to patch four the battery instant wake and the RTC nothing else so a lot of people are very skeptical about the DW1820A which is actually cheaper and the 1860 I mean from Dale so we're going to check the speed test Wow so I use Comcast maximum is a hundred make a bit per second and I'm downstairs and the router is upstairs amazing
So I think I bought this one uh, from AliExpress for twenty dollars, while the other one they sell for fifty or sixty dollars. Uh, to do a boot in the EFI, when you do a boot, if you install Microsoft first, and then you split the uh, partition for Sir then you will have a Microsoft directory and inside there you will have a boot now originally it will have the boot manager for window EF EFI so what you're going to do is you're going to rename that to dash O-R-I-G dot E-F-I then it will boot and you have to go and change copy the boot Clover 5130 in here to replace the boot from the windows Okay, so this boot right here is from Clover 5130. That's it. And when you boot, it will go directly into the Clover bootloader.